following hometown program is brought to you in living color on WBBZ TV. Welcome to the Daily Buzz 716. I'm Mercedes Wilson. We're back live at the Erie County Fair. Woo! <laughs> We have a great show for you today. We're going to meet Hamburg Town Supervisor Stephen Walters, plus we'll talk to an emergency services specialist, an iconic chef, and of course, more fair food and fun. And it all starts right now. This should never happen. I'm here with Kim and Adriana. Where the new girls Wait, wait, what, what do you mean this like should never happen? This should never happen. This should like always happen. MKA. Help me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this will help for you. Ladies, what did we do this last weekend? <gasps> well. It was a good weekend. It was a great weekend. I started my weekend off on a Saturday enjoying a lot of reggae music in Rochester. Elephant mm -hmm. Man, he is also known as the energy god. He was there for their care fest. So that was like so exciting. For my radio station in Rochester, we broadcast it live. Very nice. And that was intense. I've mm -hmm. never seen so many people jumping around and waving flags everywhere for care fest. So that was fun. Good yeah. times. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. yeah, I didn't make it home until like 3 o'clock Saturday morning. I mean, Friday morning. It was not Friday. Sunday morning. See, my days are all See, one of those days yeah. you came one of those days. You did come home. It was a good all weekend. Right. If she you did come remember. home. Yeah. She came home. <laughs> I had to be with you on Sunday. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, Adriana and I took part at the Young Miss Buffalo pageant. We mm -hmm. were judges for the pageant. Yes. So we had to do the interviews on Saturday yep. with the young women, five young women, five very intelligent And it intelligent, was so talented. hard to pick. So, yeah. I'm normally the host, and this time I used to joke about people being the host. Like, I don't want to be in you guys' seat. You mean the and judges? Now, yeah, the you don't want to be the judges. Yeah, you didn't want to make the girls cry. No, but now I had to be a judge. Yeah. It was it was a very neat experience. Very it neat was. experience. It was beautiful. Yeah. So shout out to Deetra, her whole crew, for yes. putting such together an amazing pageant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What did you do this weekend? We know you did something. I went to see Gilbert Godfrey. Oh, look yeah. at you. He was, a, he was at the Helium Comedy Club on Friday night, so I got to go and see some stand-up comedy, and I got to meet Gilbert Godfrey afterwards. Did he do the Aflac commercial? No, well, he was Iago in uh, <laughs> Aladdin. You know, Iago, the no, bird. No. Did you get an interview? Evil bird with what? Why didn't you do it? Why did I? Because I, 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 you weren't there to say, why don't you go interview him? I don't know. You can't go to these events and not invite us. I'm sorry. How was yeah. it? It was super fun. <laughs> it was so fun. He was at the Helium Club, right? Right, mm -hmm. right, 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 right. Yeah. So good, good times. Stuff. And then tonight you start rehearsal for what, Kim? <gasps> That's right. Tonight I start rehearsal for a musical I'm doing in downtown and Buffalo. And you're singing? I'm um, singing. About time, you know, yeah. we get a chance to see this in action. <laughs> we hear she sings, so, you know, really great. So um, the name of the musical is called Killer Rack. Rack. R-A-C-K. Okay, Rack. here we go. Very good. Yeah. It's about um, boobs that kill people. So on to the next thing. <laughs> of course it will be um, Yeah. So be a part of this. <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> awkward. So, Very. Okay, <laughs> okay, so moving on. Yes, yes, yes. Please, yes. To on. a not so um, happy topic. Uh, I'm sure yeah. we're all familiar with what happened in Charlottesville. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to read a little bit so that we, you know, get... If you, if for some reason one of our viewers missed it, in Charlottesville, Virginia, violence erupted Saturday as hundreds of white nationalists and white supremacists gathered here for a rally and clashed with counter-protesters, uh, counter I'm sorry, resulting in at least one death, prompting the governor to declare a state of emergency. Uh, what happened was a car plowed into a crowd. It actually backed up into a crowd near the city's downtown mall, mm -hmm. killing a 32-year-old woman, injuring 35 other people. Um, at least 19 in that actual car crash. It's just horrific. Yeah. What is wrong with people? Yeah. See, in addition to just the car crash, just the entire rally in itself became very, it, it just escalated to a place that it didn't have to be, of course. Mm -hmm. And in a sense of that, I think the whole uproar that um, everybody is in is what Trump didn't say yeah. or what they felt he should have said. Mm -hmm. And we all know, you know, it's he's pretty much been a, a president with 140 characters. He goes to Twitter for yeah, everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for him not to really um, be as blunt as he is, 
is in his normal state and not really pretty much call it is what people believe that it is mm -hmm. or they see it to be. It seemed out of character, didn't it? Yeah, it seemed because very he's, out of he's, character. He's, he's never shied away from... He never not tweets. From saying yeah. Yeah. W however he sees it. Yes. It was, it was you know, call unusual. it exactly what it is. You know, so for the governor and for everybody else to be able to see it but, and he not say it. But, 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 mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, both sides of the aisle at least are agreeing and calling this domestic terrorism. Sure, absolutely. So, you know, it, 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 both well. sides of the aisle have come yep. together, whether or not we're happy with how um, President Trump did or didn't tweet or said or didn't say, both sides of the mm -hmm. aisle have come together and, and condemned this and said this is domestic terrorism, and there's terrorism and there's no place for this. There's right. no place right. for this anywhere. Anywhere, absolutely. So our prayers, of course, goes out to absolutely. Charlottesville mm -hmm. yeah. and, you know, praying that somewhere we could push more love versus hate. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. And speaking of love, I know we love food, and one of our wonderful, it's Paul, right? My guy Paul came in, <laughs> in the audience with us. I wish we could pan the camera to him, but we can't, but we're going to make sure we get you some cameo time. He decided to make sure we knew about the taste of the fair food guy for $2. For $2? What do you for think for $2? for $2? That means there's a listing of different things on here where you can go to these places and get food for $2, like a, a Glacier Bear for $2 slush. You have BW's barbecue pork sliders for $2. Mm. And, you know, I'm Look all about face. balling on a budget Look at her. Fair. She's our, so, she's, she's counting it out. Look at her. She's what nice. else? Let me see what else we Give have one on here. You have a Candy Castle sample bag of candy saltwater taffy for two dollars. Mm. Kim got excited. You've seen it. You've seen it. Roasted almonds for two dollars. All right. So the so, so many. The point the is, like, you, can, you can go and sample yeah. all the fabulous yes. fair food and not break the bank. You can yes. actually go and taste and try just enough, a little bit of everything yep. for two dollars. Yeah. So I if you're balling on a budget like me, who's and you'll always see Paul. You'll, you'll see. <laughs> You'll see our friend Paul out there. He's yes. at two dollars. He's just going to mm -hmm. be going around the fair, going two dollars, two dollars. <laughs> oh so my God! Check out this guy oh, when you get here. Kim. Oh, Kim. So what else? Um, you so yeah, we want to highlight that we are up to three thousand um, dollars at our uh, I was fundraising. Yes. Fundraising. Gazebo. WBBZ. Up to three thousand dollars for the buzz drop game. Woo! And, and, and yeah. 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 And, and I, most people know, but just in case, all of that money goes to prevention, prevention focus, focus, which stays in our community. It stays local, and mm -hmm. it works its way into the schools and teaching children about you know drugs and alcohol and healthy choices and healthy living. So three thousand dollars. Yes, I love it. And talking about staying local, unfortunately one of our um, Bills players is no longer local and we have to talk about it because to all the Bills fans you know we're out here we're really close to the stadium mm -hmm. and folks are really in an uproar about the yeah. trading of Sammy Watkins yeah now you know I'm not gonna give my own personal opinion why <laughs> Because, you know, I just feel how I feel. And I don't want no Bills fans in the stands coming for me right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> I love the Bills, but unfortunately... She he's, wants to live. He's, he's, yes, I do. But unfortunately, he has been traded. And um, hopefully, the folks over at One Bills Driver is making the necessary changes so that we can actually win some games this coming season. So that yeah. would be great. That's like a novelty. Oh, did I say that out loud? Never I can't. Okay. Kim, what, do you know what, what sport I'm talking about when it comes golf? to Sammy Are Watkins? we talking about golf? I quit. I'm talking about football. I quit. But this is, I this quit. Is, this I can't, is a woman. I can't do this we anymore. just but listen. We have to ease her into sports. <laughs> she just played basketball with us, and now we got to ease her into football. So maybe we should go to a game together. You got to educate me. Educate you yeah. immediately. Okay. Good mm -hmm. luck with On that. Sports, because she needs oh assistance. <laughs> okay. So I, I, I have some. I have. If we have time, I have some really good news. Let's and it's hear a, about it. There's a report out. It's the economic impact of arts and culture mm. locally, and this mm. this is so exciting because you know I love our. I love our arts and culturals. I know you mm -hmm. ladies too, but our cultural organizations in Western New York pump more than $352 million wow. into the local economy every single year. And it's according to a report from an advocacy group. Um, the report uh, also reveals that they, the arts support 10,160 full-time equivalent jobs here in Western New York, mm -hmm. and that an estimated $40.3 million 
million dollars in local and state tax revenue have been uh, pumped into our western New York and draw 896 109 tourists per year. Kim always comes with the numbers. Yeah, All it right, is. Kim. Yeah, it is. Thank Great you, stuff. Kim. Thank you, Adriana. <laughs> she got that education. We'll see if I'm here when we come back. Yeah. We have to take a short break, but when we come back, we will be joined by Marty Beniaz. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Daily Buzz 716. Our first guest today knows everything about everything here at the Erie County Fair. He's the go-to guy, the marketing manager for the Erie County Agricultural Society. Please welcome Marty Beniaz. Thank you hey, so Marty. much. I'm so glad you guys are here at the Erie County Fair. I love it. So Absolutely having, love it. So much fun here. Well, we have to talk about first before we jump into this because marketing is everything and he marketed himself so well and today. Yeah. Check on his outfit. You like that? Marty here, look at that. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Gorgeous. I was, I was yeah, saying I that I, for like the last three weeks now, I've been wearing khaki pants and a black shirt. So, you know, you know, I, we've got a little bit of summer left here. You got to jump into yes, it. Yes, yeah. absolutely. It works. It, it, so yeah, works. it does. Thank yeah, you. It does. And I wanted to match my face because of the sunny, yeah. the sunny days. <laughs> I got to put some sunscreen on sooner or later. <laughs> How is the fair going so yeah. far? We are having an outstanding run. Uh, opening day was one of the largest opening days in our history. We had traffic in all directions from the fairgrounds. So if you were caught in that traffic, we apologize, but we had to, we had this built up, you know, there was this built up anticipation of the opening day. And all the way through the weekend, we've had strong crowds. So uh, we are at the halfway point of the Erie County Fair. We've got uh, another six, seven days to go, and there's so much to see and do. Awesome. What a great. Now, it is clear you're somewhat of an expert when it comes to the fair. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I did write two books about the Erie County Fair, but I mean, there's so much here. I don't think I'll ever be a true, true expert to know everything. Thing. Right, so as, as the marketer, as the manager of marketing, you know, what do you feel is most important when it comes to putting it out there for the fair? Because it's like, it's something that we all know about. We know it comes around the same time every year. So what is like the different angles that you choose to go with? So first off, we're, we're an agricultural fair. That's our mission. That's going back all the way to 1820 when the first Erie County Fair was held where Canal Side is right now. But as it's evolved, the Erie County Fair is really probably one of the only festivals in Western New York that can be all things for all people. Mm -hmm. Whether you're a farmer from North Collins that's coming to show your poultry, or you're coming from the city or a suburb and you're coming to our cooking classes, or you're on the rides, or you're coming for the food, or you, you're here to see fine art, or you're here to have your kids uh, spend some time learning, uh, it really is all things for all, thing, all people. And that's what we really the message we try to get out. Now you were really instrumental in creating the Heritage History Center that just opened up last year. Tell us about that. Well, we like to say that history is made every day at the Erie County Fair. I like that. And we've been around for a long time. This is our 178th fair. So we started a museum last year that really shares the stories because it's not just our story in history, but it's it's the collective nostalgia and history of Western New York. You know, that million people that come every year, and we've been doing this now for decades, um, you know, all feel like the, the, fair, the fair is part of them. So we hopefully tell the story in the fair museum. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? Million people. Uh, yeah. I believe Million that. people. Because the first day we were here taping, as we were leaving um, the parking lot, the line was, was, in the, was insane. insane. And just trying to, what I love most is that you guys put your own stoplights out there to really help um, maneuver and keep traffic yeah. flowing. But the line was crazy. The cars were all lined up. And it's awesome to see bright and early in the morning when people normally should be at work, mm -hmm. they're here. <laughs> at the fair. They're at the fair. They're I was like, here at the fair. It's, almost like, it's, it's almost like my other favorite day of the year, which is Dingus Day, where people are out at noon on, on a right. Monday, you know. Mm -hmm. you know you're know, you going to have Tiger Schmittendorfer, who heads up our emergency preparedness uh, on here in a little bit, but it's almost like, we like to say, this is like putting together 12 Bills games in a row, but instead of 80,000 people, you've got over 100,000 people coming in. So we work an entire 12 months for the best 12 days of summer, from mm -hmm. logistics and concessions and security, and all those pieces to make the experience the best it possibly can be. And success. Yeah. Yeah, well, so far, so so far, so good. We're, we're weather dependent. Yeah. Right. You know, we had a, a little passing shower on Saturday, I think, but that was just enough to just keep the dust down just sure. a tad. And of course, we're, we have a lot of farmers on our staff and they need the rain. Marty, we are in the cook's kitchen and shop. This is brand new. Brand new. This yeah, is, we this love is, it. It's, it's fabulous. It's turning out great. How did this come to be? Well, food is the number one reason why people come to the Erie County Fair. Mm -hmm. So we've really tried to step up our game as far 
as what we do for food. So we've got this amazing culinary scene in Western New York that you know that's going on. And we've got 60 demonstrations here. So this is the largest cooking series in Western New York during the course of the year. We've got Master Chefs. We had the guy that won Master Chef on Fox here this past weekend, mm -hmm. Sean O'Neill. Amazing, amazing demonstrations he was putting together. But on the other side, we've got the folks from the Niagara Culinary Institute. And if you've never been there before, it's really a point of pride in the community. Um, because we wouldn't have all these great restaurants if it wasn't for the kids coming out of BOCES programs and the right. culinary schools, yep. and then getting into these restaurants to, to work with the chefs and come up with something unique for Western New York. Now, as we talk about food, and like as you shared, being here, you know, we had to step up the ante, and, and when it comes to the focus of the food, what are some of your favorite foods here at the fair? Okay, so right now my favorite is Minio and Sapio, and it's not on the menu, but if you ask for the Marty, ah! you, can, you can get it. So what it is, it's uh, you start off with a beautiful Costanzo roll, and you put a Minio and Sapio cheese and Capicola stuffed sausage on it, oh. you throw the peppers on it, and this is the special part. You put a layer of big pieces of Capicola on the top, and then melted provolone on the top. And I'm telling you. Did you come up it, with this? Because you said Well, it was on the Marty. menu last year, and then this year <laughs> on opening day, I went up, and they're like, well, we took it off. And I, you know, and I was just absolutely shocked. I mean, that's that's my four food groups right there. How many <laughs> calories in that one We do not, um, let's get this straight. We do not count calories here at the Erie County Fair. Only when, you, when you come through the gate, you know, there's a calorie-free zone. Oh, but we do have no healthy, but we do have healthy options, courtesy of our friends over at the Independent Health Foundation. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which we found out just the other day. Did you guys see the kale eating contest yesterday? No. no. We oh, missed it. oh, it was Hell it yeah. was incredible. <laughs> 20, 22 containers of kale. They have big name contestants here. 22. They, they had uh, Joey the Jaws Chestnut. The, the world's, he's the pioneer of competitive eating. He was here on stage and he lost. <gasps> Who won? I forgot the guy's name, but, but, but he's like, he's like a no, he's a seven foot tall gentleman from Nigeria, and he inhaled this kale. Wait, was it cooked or was it raw? It was no, it was raw with just a little oil and, and seasoning on it. Oh. Kale, what? yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> You just see. I, I, I remember trying a kale salad, and like this is this is me in my own little um, healthy journey of just not being educated as I should have been. And I took kale that I normally put in my smoothie, and I put it in a salad. Like, yeah, yeah, babe, we're gonna try this. Eating it raw was the worst thing ever. So I don't know how he did that. I, I don't know how either. He's it a pro. You're clearly. not. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, you know, there's all kinds of great music happening at the fair, too. Yeah, well, we've had a great run of concerts tonight. Actually, on our grandstand is Larry the Cable Guy and Jeff Foxworthy. A huge, funny show. You might have seen them in the past, but you've never seen them at the Erie County Fair. And there's so much material for them to go on. And we've got, if you've got any teenagers at home, a, a, lady, a young woman named Sabrina Carpenter and she's going to be on our stage. But every turn around the fairgrounds is live music. Some of the best mm. local bands you'll find. You'll find three, four local bands playing at the same time here. How many Marie. stages are uh, We've got five stages with live music. So at any one time, all those are active. So you can go and get your kale smoothie, kale smoothie. have a seat, and watch a show. <laughs> and grab the Marty sandwich and video yeah. sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> did we talk Good about the new here. bathrooms across this? <laughs> 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 well, we want to thank Marty for sitting with us today and uh just being marty we, we we're so glad to have thank you, you. i love so wbbz so being here it's great to have this live element there's so much to talk about the fair on a daily basis and you guys here help us get the word out and build that excitement so thank, thank you. you thank you thank, thank you, you. Right. now we have to take a short break but when we come back it's time to find out what's the latest news here in hamburg from the town supervisor stephen walters so stay with us <laughs> Our next guest knows everything that there is to know about Hamburg. So we want to welcome to the show Hamburg Town Supervisor, Supervisor Stephen Walters. Welcome. welcome. Nice to be here. So, what is the latest update on the water main break repairs in the Sturgeon, Sturgeon Point? Well, the, uh, the water authority is working diligently to get things back. Um, I have spoken to a few people uh, throughout the town 
who say their water pressure is down, so I, I guess that's to be expected. Mm -hmm. um, but there is still a uh, conserved water advisory in effect, and, and they're working to, to get it back into place and, and hopefully. Do we know why this happened? I'm not sure. Um, we've reached out to the Water Authority and their municipal liaison and I have been playing phone tag. I, I was off part of last week, so we've been playing phone tag mm -hmm. trying to uh, hook up with each other mm -hmm. so I can get a little more details, but uh, I'm sure they know what's going yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. Well. So we're here at the fair. Um, talk to us a bit about the, how the fair actually um, affects and makes this huge impact on, yeah. on the South Town. Well, this is, you know, this is a, a great gem for our town and, and to be the host of, of the fair uh, is wonderful. Um, Marty was saying earlier that the traffic was a little backed up. It's, uh, they looked at as uh, wonderful, all these people are coming. We looked at as just a little bit of a headache, but not too much of a headache. It, it's, it's great um, that so many people come into town um, and, and come to the fair, uh, be able to drive through our, our community and see some of the things that are going on here. So you're, you're talking about traffic and it makes me think of all of the uh, traffic circles that you put in in Hamburg, yes, right? So yes. they're they're really nice to look at. Uh, are the traffic circles more for beautification, or are they more advantageous for actual traffic? You know, it's really both. Um, <laughs> it's it's something when when I started, and I've been here for 12 years now. And and when I started in 2006, they were just starting to get under construction. And a lot of people were concerned about them, um, but as they they were built, um, and people saw the ease of, of navigating the traffic circles, uh, the be the beautification. The ease of navigating the traffic circle. I'm always like, when is it my turn? I know my turn. I'm sitting here. No. When is it my turn? Let me in. But that's just me, huh? Right. Well, I can tell you that on Clark Street or on uh, Clark and uh, and South Park here, um, traffic, especially during the rush hour time period traffic used to be backed up where you had to wait through three or four cycles of the traffic light mm. um, you know now the traffic's moving much smoother through it um, and and it's much more pedestrian friendly too so especially when you get into the central business district of the uh, Hamburg Village it really helps to uh, facilitate the pedestrians and it has really helped beautify the whole area oh, they are, they are pretty mm -hmm. they are so now, pretty. I know it's summertime and we're gonna enjoy it and soak it all up because snow was on the way and anytime the news comes <laughs> you and talks about the South yeah. Towns I have to ask this question because I'm just like bless everyone that lives in the South Towns because they're always hit with a crazy amount of snow so um, you know how, <laughs> it's summer how does how do you all <laughs> deal with the impact of the snow you know once it falls like what are we looking at for the game plan for this year I just got to ask. So no. Snow, people want to know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with Kim. Oh. It's, it's sunny out. We're at the fair. Why are we talking about snow? Because it's on the way. Um, yes, it is, unfortunately. <laughs> I, I have to tell you, I mean, it's we've gotten so used to it that a foot or two of snow can fall in Hamburg and the South Towns, and we kind of just shrug our shoulders and, and get about uh, our day. Mm -hmm. um, we have, uh, you know, our plow routes are, are mapped out well ahead of time. Um, once the snow starts falling, we get people out there, we, we get the roads cleared. Um, but aside from seven feet of snow falling, um, we can generally move the snow with, within about five or six hours. We can have all the roads You just cleared. gotta look at her and say, we got this. No, you know, we got, we got this. this. I, like <laughs> that. So you have it. I know they got it, because it comes. Yeah, yeah. It comes. So, I don't wanna talk about that. I wanna talk about the snow. I wanna talk about the beaches. Yes, let's get to the beaches. The so, beaches. The beaches in, in, in the Hamburg area. Sometimes people are happy that the beaches are open, but sometimes they're not open. Sometimes they're not open. Um, and and that's, that's throughout all of Lake Erie and Lake Ontario. And it's just an unfortunate reality of the world we live in with, with the beaches. Um, we're one of only three towns in all of Erie County that have beachfront access on Lake Erie. Um, we have the longest beach coastline. Can I call yeah, it coastline? I think so. mm -hmm. Sure. Um, beachfront property, mm -hmm. um, just a little over nine miles of beachfront uh, in the town. Uh, we have two uh, public beaches uh, that we have, and and the public loves that. Um, I mean, we get people as far away from Canada, from Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. coming to some of these beaches to mm -hmm. just the, relax. The beaches are absolutely gorgeous, and I think you know we're we're all accustomed to sometimes the beaches are closed down when there's rain and right. the. the the water treatment plant has issues then with the beach. How 
how then, or what does, what does the village do, or how do we know, obviously the beach opens up, but how is it that we can be comfortable knowing that it is indeed okay to be on the beach that was the day before closed? Well, we've worked with the New York State Department of Health, we work with the Erie County Department of Health mm -hmm. for about two years, and we've developed a model, and we, we test that model, and, and we're over 95% accurate um, with uh, the closures. And in fact, most of the uh, mistakes that we make are when we close the beach when we actually could have left the beach open. So we err on the side of caution. Uh, if the beach is open, the, the, the water quality is, is good. Um, I, t I go in the, the water, I take my children uh, mm -hmm. in, in the water. Um, so, so we're very confident with the water quality. And again, unfortunately, uh, when you have the heavy rain, you get a lot of the runoff. And, and so for prudence sake, we close the beach, mm -hmm. uh, the water uh, those days. Um, but by and large, you know, we know when, when the water quality is good, and, and we're very cognizant of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good and then last, let's, let's touch a, a little bit on what you think the Erie County Fair, how that affects the South Towns, besides the traffic, how does that affect <laughs> the South Towns, um, in your opinion? No, it, this, is, this is really a, a great draw uh, for our community. Um, again, as, as was said, um, upwards of a million people uh, mm -hmm. come through here over the course of, of 12 days. Um, and we have shops, we have uh, restaurants, we have gas stations. Um, a lot of those people stop along the way. Um, the, the folks who live around the fair uh, use this to supplement some of their income by, by parking people on their lawns. Yeah. Um, but then just to say that, that we're the home of the Erie County Fair is, is we say that with pride and, and people know the Erie County Fair. And when you say we host the Erie County Fair, that, that's in our community. Um, then people, you know, as far away as, you know, the Syracuse area and, and going down to Pennsylvania, they suddenly know right where Hamburg is. So mm -hmm. it's a great marketing ploy for yeah. us as well to be able to say that, that the Erie County Fair is here in the town of Hamburg. Yeah, I bet. Well, thank you so much. We want to thank Hamburg Town Supervisor Stephen Walters for joining us today. Now, we have to take a short break, but when we come back, we'll meet a man who wears many hats and all, all in the name of public service. So stay with us. Thank you. Welcome back to the Daily Buzz 716. Our next guest is in charge of general security here at the Erie County, Erie County Fair and has devoted his life pub to public safety and the education and training of those who serve. Welcome. Thank you so much. Tiger Schmittendorf. I said that right. Nicely done. Yes. yes. Very, very good. Welcome. Yeah. Hi, Tiger. Hi, Kim. It's great to see you. It's nice it's to see you It's great to be back again. with you. Yes. With a name like Tiger, I feel like this position and his job is most appropriate. With a name like Tiger, it's got to be good. It's got to be good. Okay? We're going to be safe. <laughs> and in case you're guessing, yes, Schmittendorf is my real name. Yes. <laughs> so how do you go about securing a venue of this size? Uh, What's it I, like to prepare? I honestly refer to it as a tremendous honor, but a daunting task. Mm -hmm. uh, to be responsible for the uh, personal safety of the uh, literally thousands of folks who work here, mm -hmm. uh, from full-time fair staff to uh, the numbers that increase exponentially who work for the fair, our vendors, our volunteers, uh, all the folks affiliated and associated with the fair. And then on top of that, we had about a, mil about a million guests. So, uh, like I said, it is no small task, um, but really what it takes is a tremendous amount of uh, collaboration, coordination, mm -hmm. uh, communication, and most importantly, cooperation. And that's really where we succeed here. Um, we refer to those three C's uh, in the incident command system. The other uh, tipping point, if you will, or the X factor that we have here specifically in Erie County is what I like to call the fourth C, and that's community. Mm -hmm. and that's our community and uh, not only uh, how they buy into our preparedness messages and uh, also how they they respond during emergency uh, but most also um, how they really wrap their arms around our responder community mm -hmm. and acknowledge them recognize them and uh, for all of their efforts as well now when you talk about the four C's we see you have this poster for us to hashtag think fair and be safe let's talk about that because it is clear yep. and evident that when it comes to one of the C's communication you're communicating with us which you're 
your what your focus is when it comes to your time here at the fair. So let's talk about the posters that you have, and they're all around, correct? Yes, they are. They're all over the property. Uh, they're uh, they're on our daily sheets. They're integrated into all of our marketing products, and it's really a marketing uh, program specifically for our public safety and emergency management efforts here. And it's and it's uh, kind of a double word meaning, uh, playing off the the uh, uh, core uh, fair marketing theme of Think Fair. We want that to be top of mind with folks, but think fair and safe. And that really starts with their own personal safety. Being prepared to have a successful, enjoyable time when they come to the fair starts with uh, from literally head to toe and really toe to head what you're putting on your feet making sure you have appropriate footwear making sure that you're prepared for whatever we uh, weather we might see here at the fair uh, you know especially at this time in August we're very susceptible to pop-up storms that might yeah. not mm -hmm. have appeared on the radar mm -hmm. um, so we ask folks to be prepared for that and uh, it's also we understand that especially when it comes to safety and security there might be some minor interruptions, perhaps a little uh, delays and so forth, but we're going to be as fair about that as possible to make sure that they are safe and secure. And, and the other really uh, overarching theme that we promote here at every level, uh, both with our guests but also with all the great folks that work here, um, is that the theme of if you see something, say something, just yeah. doesn't apply to suspicious behaviors and certainly the, the threat of, of both t domestic and foreign terrorism that we have on a daily basis. Um, but it uh, it applies to something as simple as slips, trips, and falls, electrical hazards, anything that, quite honestly, could prevent somebody from having the greatest and most enjoyable, fun time here at the fair. Yeah. When you when you've got this tremendous undertaking, you know, we're talking about 12 days, a million people, right? Right. right. Do you rely heavily on your volunteers? Uh, we actually uh, rely on both uh, paid and volunteer professionals. Uh, whether uh, it's directly with the town of Hamburg uh, government itself, um, the uh, emergency management office of the town of Hamburg, Sean Crotty and Paul Randall as their emergency managers, um, the town of Hamburg police department and their presence here, uh, our other law enforcement partners with the uh, Erie County Sheriff's Department, New York State Police, the United States Department of Homeland Security, um, New York State Department of Environmental Conservation, uh, all of those great partners and that's really the testament to the success of the safety and security that we've had here at the fair. It's all about cooperation, it's all about uh, networks, and it's all about friendships. And that's uh, one thing that I enjoy most about working here. Uh, and I'm literally taking two weeks of my uh, earned vacation time to be here and work uh, 100 hours plus here at the fair, but it's not really work when you get to work with the same folks you work with every single day, just in a little different setting and a little different role. Yeah. So. My teacher used to say, when you find a job you love, to do you never work a day in your absolutely. life absolutely so it's clear that you're you're out here absolutely enjoying so. doing what you're yeah. working. absolutely <laughs> and, and and i'll tell you kind of a funny side to that is uh we say if, if you see the folks responsible for the safety of a million people laughing and, and, and smiling and having a good time, you better be laughing right. and smiling. Because <laughs> they got it on. Um, if yeah. you see us with a serious look on our faces, don't worry about it because we got it under control. But if you see us running, you might want to be <laughs> running the in the opposite yeah. direction. Get out, get out of the with way. one get exception. Out of the way. Right. With one exception, if you see me running for ice cream, try to keep up. <laughs> now you're a volunteer fireman as well, right? I am. I've been a volunteer firefighter. I'm a member of the Evans Center Volunteer Fire Company uh, in the town of Evans for, uh, I'll actually finish my uh, 37th year doing wow. that, September 1st, mm -hmm. something I'm very proud of Tiger and just uh, is blessed. responsible Thank for you. hundreds and hun recruiting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of volunteer firemen. This this man is a gem in our community. Yeah. Now, Tiger, I want to know. That's a strong you, word, but thank you. No, but, but, but seriously, <laughs> it makes sense because, you know, being a volunteer firefighter, being out here as a first responder, you know, what was it about? your your upbringing that made you want to be of service in such a way to where you're putting yourself first well I'll tell you an interesting story I never knew that I had a true connection to the fair other than coming quite often on fireman's day uh, the first Friday of the fair until our 175th anniversary um, where they created an anniversary DVD and my cousin Julie who lives just off of fairgrounds Boulevard here was watching the DVD paused it rewound it and took a photo of her TV and sent it to me and I said I think this is a picture of your mom Wow. And I said, it absolutely is. And we never knew the photo existed. It was taken in 1968. Mm. 
the five youngest of the eight of us kids in my family are in that photo. I was five years old wow. in that photo. We had no idea it existed. They had no idea who was in the photo, and to think that 40 years later, I'm now the emergency manager of the fair That's is pretty just neat. Uh, pretty cool That's to me. That's pretty neat. Pretty cool to me. Uh, I, there's been a lot in the news lately about ride safety. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yep. What do you? What's what's the fair doing uh, with uh, preparedness and and whatnot? Uh, we have multiple layers of inspection and re-inspection. Uh, we have great partners again. Uh, the Straight Shows has a long history of success with yeah. us and, and all across totally the country. Totally going to interrupt you. Okay. You know what? Absolutely. I, I, I have an even more important um, question. I understand okay. that you really, really are very serious about ice cream. Well, <laughs> okay. You, you know, they say admitting you may have a problem is the first step, so we'll go there. We're yeah. going to cater to that addiction right now. Okay. We um, have something very very special for you here, Tiger. Uh, this ice cream is um, Mercedes. What do, we, what do we call this? Roast, roast beef ice cream. Sunday. Roast, roast, yes. beef. roast beef ice, ice cream. cream. Sunday. Hot roast Hot Sunday. Roast Hot roast Sunday. Sunday. Hot roast Sunday. Hot roast Sunday. Yes. So, um, wow. Right. So uh, we're trying wow. to switch up your palate Phil here. Arno, <laughs> Phil Arno <laughs> made sure you had a roast beef Sunday. Well, that's awesome. I'm not going to embarrass myself by eating it in front of you. <laughs> but, uh, that's fine because we have to take a break anyway. <laughs> I will. We okay. want to thank Tiger Smittendorf for joining us today and for all that he does to keep the public safe and develop the careers of those who serve. So coming up next, it's time to cook with <laughs> Chef Krista Van Wagner. So stay with us. <laughs> of course you'll eat. <laughs> Next guest is prominent icon in the hospitality business and also an entrepreneur with her own brand of hot sauce, which we cannot wait to try. We're excited to have with us today Chef Krista Van. Say, say your name for me. Van Wagner. Van, I, I, Van love Wagner. It. I love it. I love it. So and she also has here. executive chef Darian. Darian with Bryan us. is with me today. He's yes. um, executive chef at the Prima Cafe. I love it. Also, okay. I've been doing a little consulting with, but I'm so happy to be here at the fair today. Yes. This what is do we awesome. Have? Oh my gosh. What do we have? What I'm doing is, oh, you've talked about the jerk. That's one of my specialties. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing is a jerk stir fry. Okay. Because our gardens are abundance. Yes. What is the vegetable? Your choice. This is a very, very basic recipe. Is that coconut oil? Yeah. Yes. I always use coconut oil. Yes. I use it in the shower after the shower. So do I. I, I just love my coconut oil. Coconut, That's popping. Coconut oil. Oh no, no! Not it's got a great smoking point. <laughs> oh. Great smoking point, guys. Okay. So go ahead and use it now. Stir fry is real basic. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do is I'm going to season my oil. Some people pay for like garlic flavored oil and all that. What I'm going to do is show you how to do it home. Garlic, ladies, smell it. Oh yeah. Okay, mm. ginger. I heard that you guys love ginger. Oh yeah. Oh well, yeah. Here you get somebody to told oh. me a story. <laughs> oh, somebody, <laughs> somebody told me a story. Oh. That one's for you. <laughs> oh wait. You Use crushed ginger, you. okay? Yes. So there we go. I'm More adding ginger. it to my pan. I'm seasoning my oil. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my chicken. And this is a one pan dish. What is, what is the chicken soaking oh in? Oh my gosh, let me tell you. I am soaking it in my jerk marinade. Okay. okay, so you just put the chicken in the bowl and throw it on top of it. 15 Done. minutes, and my favorite are those tenders. Get those chicken tenders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're awesome. Now, what I have in front of me is my mise en place, and this is all I want to tell you as far as cooking goes. Mm -hmm. Have your mise en place before you start cooking. Okay. Mise en place, French word for mess in place. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I teach okay. at ECC and uh, City Campus and Niagara Falls culinary and my students this is their job is to display beautifully their mise en place just like they're going to be on tv okay nice. i've okay. done quite a bit of tv so this is like my thing yeah, yeah right. you look good doing it too you look good. so anyway that's it this is a one pan dish have your mise en place it's corn season right now yeah <gasps> Oh my gosh, you have corn. I love corn. Take it off the air with a knife and put it in. Fresh what corn. vegetable you use, it doesn't matter. We're going to take the technique, the stir fry technique, and we're going to pump it up and do a seasonal dish with it, okay? <laughs> I don't so, know why, but you doing well, this makes me want to dance. I know, I know. I love cooking. I love stir fry. So, this when did is so you first, awesome. You know, um, develop the love for cooking. Well, I started out, have you heard of Curly's and Lackawanna? Everybody's yeah. heard of Curly's. I'm former chef, owner of Curly's. 
Shirley's Grill. And since I've left, I'm studying. Um, I'm back in college for my bachelor's. All right. So I can be a full-time teacher Go at NCCC and ECC City. So I, I, I heard it. that you also um, studied in the Caribbean. Oh, I lived in Jamaica. Um, Grand That's Cayman. My, 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 my diploma. Now I'm just adding my vegetables. We're stir frying, and I still feel like dancing. Yeah. I'm adding <laughs> my veg. I've got zucchini from the garden. Look at that. So it doesn't matter whatever you have. So Carrots. Mm. Slice them on a bias. Slice them thin. Expose a lot, okay? But you want them to cook fast. Do you add more jerk into it? Oh, uh, you know what? I will. Yeah. In fact, speaking that, of that, have you tried my jerk delicious? No. no. I made it for everyone who's gluten free. Okay, I changed my Ooh. attitude. Darian, I'm gonna let you um, just pour a little uh, clamato. I want the ladies to try this. Ooh. It's uh, jerk delicious. Well, so is delicious. We have a juice it's gluten that's gonna free. help us afterwards. Yes. So what is the juice awesome. for? What is the juice the for? The clamato. Did you ever have like a Bloody Mary in the morning? No. Well, never. on Sundays it was brunch yesterday. So we did. Never. So this You're is it. Lying. Just one drop. One drop in each. Oh wait, we're putting the hot sauce in. Yes, because someone told me they wanted to taste it. <laughs> All right. I also Who said that. My there's great a idea. rumor. <laughs> I brought some chips for you to taste this. This sauce is delicious. Delicious. Okay. I lived in Hell Grand Cayman two uh -huh. years. Okay from Buffalo, jerk wings and or jerk wings and hot sauce was what I brought back for Ooh. you. Because the um, chicken wings, as a kid, I could never make them hot enough. When right. I lived in Jamaica, I discovered the scotch bonnet pepper, Ooh. and it rocked my world. Oh, dangerous. wait a minute. Did you make that with the scotch bonnet? Well, this one I'm using habanero. I'm sorry, oh, okay, but okay. I got the flavor. I wouldn't so, Darian, yeah, in the Ooh, cups with the hot scary. sauce. Yeah. You're in that's charge hot. of the ladies. So, I'm making my sauce. You ready? Yes, yes. I'm ready. Okay. Ready. So this is jerk delicious hot sauce, and this is Delicious hot sauce. Yes, and guess what? That sounds like you know. I if you did eat this, that. I did the it's jerk. It's about as hot as there. I did the jerk <laughs> because my family's gluten free. Now what is no, that? What, yeah. You're adding it. Is I'm going to add. I'm adding chicken stock. You oh. can add vegetable broth. Vegetable broth. You can add um, beef if you're doing the beef. Do you hear the sizzle in the pan? Yes, mm -hmm. I do. Yeah. I'm cooking on high, and that's one of the techniques I teach you in class. I want to taste the sizzle this. in the pan. It's yeah. so simple. Yeah. My burner's high. We're ready. Let's thicken it. So I've got cornstarch on to mix that with cold water mm. and that's my thickening agent mm. if you want gluten-free the jerk delicious I made for the gluten-free people mm -hmm. add soy and pineapple juice and then it becomes this Ooh. I took this off the market but it's coming back yeah. all right it's what? at Gershio's and it's at Clark's poultry and seafood and it will be in Wegmans and top What's my this? favorite sandwich in the whole world and what is that marinated jerk pork loin which I have here Ooh. overnight or two days mm. in the jerk marinade and serve it with chutney and jerk mayonnaise and I have the recipes at jerk sauce Com. And what do we have this right here? What oh, that is, that's a little about Darian. All right. Well, at the fair, and the reason why I'm here is because of Prima Leva, I've been doing consulting. That is a brownie. It's done with blood orange olive oil. Wow. I use Giardelli mix, which we won't do at the restaurant, but I just did it for the fair. Giardelli mix, and I added the blood orange olive oil. It, we love sponge candy. We love sponge candy. The chocolate yes, sponge candy. I never think of uh, olive oil for baking. Okay, it is awesome. The flavor it becomes that Can we chocolate. try some of the drink? Yeah, oh, do a cheers, please. T pass that along. I'm this seasoning This has got hot now. stuff in it, ladies. Yeah. Okay, it's okay. delicious. <laughs> then do some in, the, in that. I'm so sauce. afraid. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, All right. while I'm making my sauce, Are we ready? I'm oh, yeah. this up. Hello, guys. Good luck. Cheers, yes. ladies. Woo. Let's watch Darian drink it first. No, two. Woo. Is it hot? Oh, no. Dare what a guess. We want to thank Krista <laughs> Van Wagner for being with us today and sharing this amazing food. We also want to thank Darian for being with us today. We have to shake, t take a short break. This is hot. But we'll be right <laughs> back with some love final it. thoughts. I love it. Thank you. Woo. And that's your this serious kick. Welcome back to the Daily Buzz 716. This is our favorite part. Everybody dances when we eat. Yes, you do. We're still here with Chef Krista and Darian. Mm. Now, what is Darian doing right now? Are um, you giving the, us more hot stuff? The delicious. <laughs> the delicious. I really, you, you challenge It's delicious. Me. I need all now, of you this. You challenge Wait a minute. Okay, so this. I need this, you to do, like, classes because. I do. You made this in about, what, how Ten long was seconds. that? Seven, seven minutes. Seven oh minutes. Gosh. The point I'm trying to make is you can do 
Oh, at home mm. too. If you have your mise en place. See, now I got a, the mise en place. Ooh. Is that it right? Yes, you I did. Be mise ready. Mise en place. Do mess you have in your place. Wow. In place. I got my delicious. Eat the delicious. It's it's Is that onions, hot? thyme, garlic. No, it's not okay. hot at all. Try it. Yeah, tell I us. I lived in Hell Grand Cayman. You tell me. Is that hot, Adriana? Flavorful. It's it's not about fire. Is it hot like you, girl? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> High five on that one. Oh, oh, High five on that one. I love it. You know, I love I love how you spicy. tried to look beautiful doing that too. I know. I know. <laughs> okay, so it's time to announce the lucky number. <laughs> If you visited our gazebo here at the Erie County Fair and picked a lucky mm. number card, take a look to see if you're a winner. Today's number is 810, so 810. If you have it, you win $20 off of gameplay at Dave & Buster's. So please bring your, bring your winning lucky number card to the WBBZ studio at the Eastern Hills Mall during regular business hours to claim your prize. Remember, there's no purchase necessary and you must be 18 years of age or older to win. We want to thank you for being with us today here at the Daily Buzz. If you're visiting the fair during the week, stop in, watch the show, and say hello to us. You won't get any of our food. Sorry. Uh, Some buzz we share. Also, Sometimes. be sure to be sure to check out our Buzz Drop game at the WBBZ Gazebo. You could be the next big winner. Thank you for watching WBBZ TV. We'll see you tomorrow. Why don't we, why don't we put some rice in this and give a little bit out? Yeah. I can taste it. I want to try the holistic.